What is going on, Minecraft Java Edition players that want to play Minecraft Java Edition with Amethyst Launcher? Today, I'm going to show you how you can play Java Minecraft even on a potato like this and with a controller. I'm just kidding. I'm not showing you how to set up a controller with this potato. It's actually very complicated. It takes some scientific skills. <laughs> That is right, mobile gamers that want to play Java Minecraft with Amethyst Launcher on their Android device. Today, I'm going to share kind of some pointers about getting more FPS, more performance, and basically be able to play Java Minecraft, but there's going to be some sacrifices, okay? Just like my introduction to this video, I call this device a potato. This is called the Retroid Pocket 3. It doesn't have any performance profile settings. It's basically just like a phone with a controller built inside. It also will eventually thermal throttle when you're playing for long periods of time when it comes to heavily demanding like emulation and stuff like that, or even Java Minecraft. The reason why I like to share this kind of content is because a lot of people do have very low spec devices. And it's very possible to get some decent performance if you set things up properly or decently. And also, if you lower the version, lowering the version, usually, because there's less graphics, there's less uh, rendering, there's less stuff going on, you could potentially play lower versions, just like my video about low spec phones and enjoy playing Minecraft. Now again, that all falls under sacrifices. The other thing is, I'm gonna load into this game right now. This is 1.20.1 with Forge and Optifine. Now, how do you get Forge with Optifine? Well, I have a video in the description of this video inside of a playlist that teaches you everything you need to know about how to set up basically Forge with Optifine so that you can use Forge with Optifine. There's a whole playlist for Amethyst. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to pay attention to the facts here because if I can do this and get a stable 30 FPS, then you should be able to too, especially if you have a better phone or a better device than I have. And as you can see here, like this device only has, I think three gigabytes of RAM. So I'm only able to allocate not even a gig so that's one other thing that's very important, especially if you're playing mod packs or expecting to play with mod packs. I bet you 10 to 1 this device will not play all mods 10 or even load it or even download it at that. I don't, I don't even know if it'll let this device download it. But as you can see here, I did a video the other day about how performant this device is with like the latest version of Minecraft 1.21.10. I keep forgetting the versions now. No, 1.21.11. Even with my mod pack and stuff like that, my mod pack OptiMobile is not going to boost or help boost a potato device in general. All that mod pack has is all the generic mods like sodium and all the other mods that i think work great alongside sodium to get better performance i did a video about optimobile and showed that i was getting i think 150 plus fps during that video i think it was something around there and it was with the same settings same everything and i was getting more performance with the same setup <clears throat> now right now i'm using mobile glues i'm using these video configurations okay <laughs> you're gonna be like oh wow that's crap yeah, two render distance, pretty much crap. Eight simulation distance, yeah, that's gonna kinda suck, but if you're in the two render distance zone and you don't leave very much, then as it says here, five to 12, normally faster. 13 to 24, farther, slower. 25 to 32, extremely slow. That depends on your device. Now I have max frame rate turned off, entity shadows turned off, GUI scale doesn't matter, smooth lighting levels turned off, and I have fast graphics, but I also have details. I have fancy trees, so that I have some fancy trees, but if I turn those to fast, I bet you I can get more performance. And and I'm gonna turn those to fast for now. Now, biome blend all the way down, entity distance 50%, and that is about it for all of these settings right here. Animations decreased. I could technically turn all of these off and maybe just put like uh, animations for certain particles, like textures, for example, or uh, portal particles and stuff like that, and turn those off. It depends on where you are in your world and how much stuff you have around you that has particles floating around. And that's why you see guys on computers that tinker away when they are in the middle of a game sometimes. I turn off show GLS errors because it's kind of annoying if you have a GLS error pop up on the screen and causes issues sometimes. Now for showing the FPS, that also can slow down the F the actual FPS a little bit because you have more graphics rendering on the screen as well. Also showing even your debug menu. Now for weather, you can turn that off and on and stuff like that as well, but I'm gonna leave it on. 
For quality, yeah, we've already went through quality. Oh no, we didn't go through quality yet. Map levels all the way down. Uh, entity models, you can turn that on and off as well. That just depends on if you're using like um, certain resource packs and stuff like that that require that. Better snow off, random entities, turn that on and off. It's up to you. <clears throat> this turning it off, it tells you, like it specifically tells you what everything kind of does. And I think that's very beneficial, especially if you have a low spec device, even a PC, because if you turn off these settings, then it'll help with your performance a bit okay so go done go done now the other thing to take note is that i am actually using 100 scaling resolution right now sometimes some devices actually benefit from lowering this sometimes even if you leave it at the the default scaled resolution it actually is better to keep leave it at the scaled resolution because your device isn't trying to uh basically downscale it's kind of something that you'd have to go and do a little bit more searching about. I'm not here to scientifically tell you everything um, about how that works, but when you're downscaling on some devices, it does help a bit. And even taking note of the load times, I'm only using mobile glues. I'm not using the angle render at all. And we're going to see what kind of FPS we get in the top left hand side of the screen while not using the angle renderer. All right, so I'm not using any mods really, except for Optifine. And right now this device is slugging along it's trying to catch up okay not like the Heinz catch up it's just trying to catch up with rendering the graphics in and I also turned the trees to be fast and right now again I am using just the regular mobile glues without any angle or anything like that which is going to lead me to my next thing is that the angle render actually does help with some devices okay and that's the big benefit of even mobile glues over some other renders out there like ltw for example is that you can toggle this on and off and basically i'm looking at like 15 fps right now right this is basically what i'm getting i don't know if i'm gonna get any more with the angle render turned on or off but we're about to find out i'm gonna stay down in this little cave we're gonna stand in this corner and what are we getting we're still not getting like a smooth stable fps okay we're gonna run out here actually there's more graphics out here we're gonna look around and we're gonna look at these trees i'm gonna go over here for a second and i'm gonna pick up all these stuff off this ground yeah i was playing on this for a bit just trying to <laughs> see if i can actually enjoy this and let's basically just go back down into this hole so i'm gonna leave the game and I'm going to go to the settings from Allow Glue. So I'm going to show you all this too. And set the angle render to be turned on. Now back in Amethyst, we're going to go to the settings icon, video and render, go to extra render settings. And you're going to change this option right here that says use angle as driver to be enabled. Now there's another option down here that says something about angle only options. This is only for specific versions. And I think it's only 1.2, 1.5 and above that require this if I remember correctly, but you can turn that on if you find that that might help a little bit and you don't really need to touch much else. I have 128 megabyte GLS cache and that's about it. Now we're gonna click on play and then we're going to see what kind of performance we get with the same settings. I'm not touching any of the settings in the menu or anything like that. We're just gonna jump right into it and see if we get about the same performance or better. And here we go. Another tip, if you don't know if anything's happening when you're inside of the actual launcher, click on the settings icon on the top of the screen and click on log output. Like if you get stuck on a black screen or anything like that, you'll see a log that's generating here usually, but right now it's not generating because there's nothing going on. Just a tip. I might do a video about some tips about Amethyst Launcher, but anyways, so I'm going to go through these settings really quick here, just so you can see that I haven't messed with anything or changed anything. And it's just more of a, hey, here you go. I'm not a liar. <laughs> That's basically all it is. It's just so that you can see this. If you want to slow this down to, you know, negative 50%, and watch this yourself then go ahead but there you go that's all i'm doing okay i'm not changing anything i'm gonna go back into that same world and we're gonna see if we can load into the world a lot faster and this the actual fps starts increasing a bit okay so <clears throat> we're in this spot down here and we are using the angle render right now now i'm not going to leave this on screen i just want to show you that we are using it we're going to see if the angle render does help with the performance a bit and right now we're out here looking around, looking at the world and stuff, and we're checking out the FPS. Now, I'm gonna put a side-by-side -side comparison. Wow, 40 FPS. I don't think we ever hit 40 FPS the last time, and the angle render is doing its job, and it's almost stabilizing itself. It's trying to catch up and do its thing in the background, which is very important as well, too, because when you jump first into a world, or jump into a world for the first time, even on a PC, it's going to take some time to start loading chunks, and if you don't know anything about that, then yeah, that's what's going on, okay? 
And as you can see here, even the chunks are taking a few seconds in the background when it comes to new sections of the world to actually start rendering it. Now, I know I didn't walk over here when we were using the, the render without angle or anything like that, but I just wanted to come over here because I know there's gonna be more graphics around here and stuff. And I'm gonna try to keep an eye out for where I'm jumping here because this is all, all snowy blocks. Okay, here we go. And I don't want to fall in there. I think there's a whole bunch. Let's go to this cave. I'm going to try to get to this cave. And it's trying to... Crap. Ah! All right, I don't have a shovel. I didn't play this long. But right now, this feels smooth to me. And I know you're going to make sacrifices. You're going to basically... You know, some people might not mind playing older versions of Minecraft. Some people are going to be like, I want to play the newest version. I'm like, well, that's where it comes into play where it's like, well, I guess you're going to have to wait either that or buy a device like a phone that has very good, you know, performances and stuff like that, like a Red Magic or something like that. Um, even even a Samsung S22 is OK. OK, I know I did a video about this device being a lower spec device like the, Sam the Samsung S22 in the past, but like it's still a really good device compared to even this thing that I'm playing on right now. And right now, if you're fine with playing with fast graphics and you just want to show your friends that you're playing with Java Minecraft, on your low spec phone and you don't mind it and all your friends play java minecraft that have pcs and stuff like that and you're able to get online and everything then enjoy okay 40 fps i'm back down here and everything started to render in a lot better we're getting 40 fps 50 fps are we gonna hit 60 come on let's hit 60 come on come on angle but again this oh oh 60 there we go we got 60 fps <laughs> that's exciting right like that's exciting now again this is all dependent on you you could crank up maybe one more chunk to the render distance on a device like this. But the big point that I'm trying to make here is that a lot of people do come to the channel and they're like, oh, this isn't working. Your mod pack's not working for me. Well, I can't fix a potato device. Like I'm not even using my mod pack in this video and I'm just using just basically Optifine and Forge. Now, again, when you start fighting a dragon or something, or you get into an area where there's a lot of entities and stuff like that, then yeah, your performance is also going to slug down. But that comes into play with how graphics process, how graphics render. Uh, I know this because I developed a couple games in the past for the Google Play Store. I'm currently working on a game and um, I'm also working on a game that's a dual screen game. I'm hoping that it'll get on the Play Store very soon. And also I'm just trying to, you know, trying to teach people a little bit because I like teaching people things like this to understand why no matter what you do, you might not even get 60 FPS like I am right now. How am I getting 60 FPS? Well, that's because I tinkered away with the settings until I got that 60 FPS. And it's not stable, but it feels good. Like I'm playing on this little screen right now and it feels good enough. And I'm using 100% resolution, which reminds me, if we crank down this resolution, let's see if that changes anything whatsoever with this device. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And it just depends on, oh, it did. Look how much FPS I got. Almost double the FPS because I changed it down to 50%. And again, like I said, sometimes this does help. Sometimes it doesn't because it's downscaling all these pixels and everything. And it also depends on the device itself. If the device will, you know, act the way it's supposed to. Have a nice day, guys. Hope you enjoyed this little bit longer video about getting more FPS is what people like to say. Bro, how do I get more FPS? Frank Periwinkle sauce. <laughs> bye bye.